Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and we are back with another example chart and we shall discuss uh, some combinations and some placements for infidelity in a horoscope which means uh, the person is having difficulty staying faithful to one's spouse and wishes to keep hopping like uh, animals from one person to the other that is basically what is infidelity or it could be in a subtle level also you are staying with somebody but your heart is with somebody else okay so there are many 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 combinations which are mentioned in the classics well not directly i would say but yeah there are certain indications or hints given and uh, this is the chart which you see in front of you is example of such a person who is plagued with this habit of infidelity and today we shall try to see some of these combinations and as usual i say disclaimer these combinations can be there in your chart but it's not necessary that you are cheating on your spouse or it could happen that uh, these combinations are not there in somebody and there's some other combination. There are hundreds and thousands of combinations which are there because of which that person is cheating. Okay. So don't think that this, this is just an example. Okay. Example will have certain combinations, will not have certain combinations. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, then you could please go to the description section down below in my of my videos. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. All right. So what are, the, what are some of the combinations which can uh, force or because of which a person could indulge in infidelity well infidelity is a desire infidelity is basically a desire which is you know outside the codes of uh, sanction from the scripture so essentially it is linked with rahu basically rahu is the karaka for infidelity cheating okay cheating on somebody so therefore the first thing is we have to see where which house Rahu lords okay Rahu originally lords the 11th house Aquarius along with Saturn and he also gets exalted in the third house of Gemini originally the third house of Gemini okay these two are very crucial and from there either of these houses he will aspect the seventh house of course because rahu aspects the fifth and the ninth so therefore if the lagna lord is somehow linked with these kama houses or with rahu then this is this is a first indicator of infidelity okay this is not the only indicator now uh, many people will have this but it doesn't mean that they are going on cheating okay so you you may see this video and you may think oh i am very faithful he's speaking nonsense all right don't think like that i will show many placements which are there in this horoscope okay so now let us analyze what is going on ascendant lord is saturn he is again in the 11th house Again, he this Rahu is also in the Kama Kama Trikon, you see, 3, 7 and 11. So, he Saturn is in a Kama house. Then, Rahu itself is in a Kama house, in the third house. Third house is generally the house of prostitution. And from there, he is aspecting Saturn, which is the Lagnesh. Okay. So, Rahu is very, very, very dominant in the chart. Rahu is controlling the chart actually. So this is the first indicator that somebody might have these tendencies to look outside because Rahu Ketu represents boundaries. Okay. So also of course Rahu aspects the seventh house of marriage. All right. And what is Saturn here? Saturn is not only the Lagnesh, Saturn is the second lord also. So Rahu aspects the second lord also. So it can give a person a tendency to break off the family, okay, or marriage or whatever you want to call it. 
but that is an added factor all right then what are the other principles the the other principles are if somehow the seventh house is linked with the eighth or the twelfth house somehow which means if the eighth lord is in the seventh or twelfth lord is in the seventh all right because these are houses of uh, physical relation basically all right twelfth house is bed pleasures and eighth house is the core house of sexuality Seventh house is actually not the house of sexuality. People misunderstand the seventh house. Seventh house is the house of union, basically. When you get married to a person, you sign a contract, right? That we will stay together with each other for the rest of our lives. That is the seventh house in sanction with the scriptures and the society, of course. That is what is the seventh house. So when this seventh lord is indulging somehow or sorry not indulging is associating with the eighth house or the eighth lord somehow in some way or the other then infidelity can happen all right but again the first step is you check the lagnesh okay if lagnesh is in a kama house and somehow linked with rahu conjunct or aspected by so we saw the first condition had been fulfilled okay lagnesh was in a kama house and linked with rahu so two conditions now the third condition the eighth lord son is uh, not in the seventh twelfth lord jupiter is aspecting the seventh but that's still good not a very big problem but the lord of the seventh is in the twelfth this is a very crucial placement because twelfth house deals with uh, the things that you do not show to the world okay which you do it in uh, secrecy basically so therefore this twelfth house is linked to the seventh house and also i have seen uranus and neptune i have seen this time and again and again and again they are always involved in infidelity because uranus they say uh, breaks of things okay wherever uranus is sitting so when uranus associates with the seventh house or the seventh lord there could be a tendency to break off the marriage and go to somebody else and then neptune is the karaka for illusion so this seventh lord in 12th you know perfect illusion romance and you know sexuality perfect it's like made for each other <laughs> <laughs> okay but that is not all there are many other combinations which are also present in this chart well now the fifth house is very important the fifth house is the house of charm attraction beauty intelligence so the so if a person has a very prominent fifth house along with these combinations then in my knowledge i have seen it is 100% assured that there is infidelity in the chart but the fifth house alone doesn't function the fifth house has to be linked somehow with either of the 8th or the 12th either of these houses otherwise infidelity doesn't come so for example if the 10th lord or the 9th lord or the lagnesh is in the 5th that's a great placement to have for maintaining maintaining married life but if the lords of the 8th or the 12th is somehow associated then it totally corrupts the 5th house and now you see what is happening here you have the 8th lord which is sun is sitting in the fifth house with the fifth lord venus okay so again that tendency is becoming more and more strong the tendency to flirt with somebody to connect with somebody to impress somebody you know, to prove that there is no better person than you in this world okay to prove some to try to prove somebody that uh, you will have the best time of your life if you are with me that is how the fifth house gets corrupted 
and then the next factor i have seen is if the moon is not very well placed even then this the possibility of infidelity is even reinstantiated once again so here what is going on with the moon now moon is in the 12th house in sagittarius that's not a very bad placement but I have again seen when the moon is undergoing some kind of a planetary war somehow okay which means here if you see Mars and Mercury they are sitting in the sixth house sixth house is the house of breakup it is the house of divorce or separation or celibacy basically okay so you we know very well Mars and Mercury do not get along together okay so when this mars and mercury so mars and mercury see mars is basically masculine nature and mercury is like multiple of everything okay so when this mars mercury somehow links with moon i have seen or even moon and rahu mercury or moon rahu mars i have seen okay sometimes venus also then it could happen that the person likes to be very masculine masculine and do a lot of show off that yeah 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 you know actually i am very masculine so it's good to be around that person the person could pretend like that whether he is like that or not in reality he or she of course that that's secondary but the person will pretend like that okay so therefore here moon is in the 12th house and this combination here is in the sixth house of break break of relationships and this is tormenting the moon okay so the mind is very 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 affected by this combination it's like a direct mutual aspect yeah and the last point which we will discuss today for infidelity is somehow if the ascendant or the ascendant lord or moon is linked very strongly with mercury and venus both of them okay not individually so here you see what is happening the lagnesh saturn is being aspected by venus that too from the fifth house in own sign and this mercury again aspects the moon so this can also give a tendency to the person to be uh, to be looking for different people always okay so there you see there are multiple combinations and one last thing which i will discuss is a corrupted jupiter always i have seen because jupiter represents the morals which a person has so here jupiter is in marana karak sthan third house is the house where jupiter feels as if he is dying because third house is the house of uh, prostitution basically so therefore it's like uh, telling a spiritually elevated person to go there and you know enjoy so he will feel as if he is dying there you know maybe he is not dying but his spiritual progress is finished it's gone completely so again uh, he, uh, <coughs> here it is in the third house and it is in the rahu ketu axis so this is guru chandal yoga which is occurring now the good thing is this is in pisces so if he does remedies for jupiter then he will be able to overcome this all right and sometimes you will get a question that how do i know if i am doing i am practicing infidelity or my spouse is practicing okay so for that you have to check if the lagnesh is involved or the seventh lord is involved so it's very funny in this chart both the lagnesh saturn and moon are involved in these yogas you see so it could happen the other way around also so lagnesh is involved means you are doing seventh lord is involved means your spouse is doing okay so it's a very tricky situation to identify who is actually the culprit okay so there you go that is it from my side and these are the combinations which if you see in a chart systematically if you analyze then 
now of course if somebody comes to you and says that oh i have this chart of uh, prospective uh, spouse so then uh, should i go ahead with this person or not okay so in that case if you see all these combinations then you also have to uh, check the overall horoscope properly okay you have to check the trine and lords especially so here trine and lord venus is afflicted by this you know sun saturn that is another red flag the ninth lord mercury is again in adusthana another red flag okay saturn lagnesh aspected by the eighth lord another red flag so if imagine if these three were well placed then what would happen that it, it would have happened that this infidelity tendencies would be there but the person would somehow not indulge in it okay but now because the trinal lords the lagna lord fifth lord and ninth lord are corrupt including this jupiter therefore the person will himself indulge in it all right there you go that is it from my side and uh, you can let me know in the comments if you feel uh, this video is very negative or uh, if you want such videos uh, frequently or you don't want these videos because uh, i have been uploading almost 1000 videos or 1100 videos but i did not upload any video on infidelity because this can create a lot of fear and a lot of panic in people if they see this in their partner's horoscope okay so uh, please if you see these combinations in your partner's horoscope do not go and interrogate them okay that you have to judge from your personal experience if you have doubt okay so don't use this video as a a gun to shoot somebody oh you are having an affair with somebody i know you you are always like this all right so please don't do that and also if there are some of these combinations as there are many more which you can also write in the comments if you have seen some people who have indulged then uh, so there are many more so which i i have not mentioned in this video okay so you have to judge the entire horoscope and you also have to check the navamsha so i will not speak on the navamsha this time but i will leave it for you guys to comment on the navamsha what do you think does the navamsha say that this person can indulge in infidelity or do you think the navamsha does not say that okay so i would like love to hear it from you your interpretation of the navamsha and how would you reconcile this infidelity which you uh, have seen in the d1 chart all right thank you very much and if you want a consultation from me you can go to the website down in the description section and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and uh, god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him thank you very much